The retail inflation figures for the month of November are out and things are not looking good for the Indian economy. With inflation swiftly moving towards the Reserve Bank of India's red line mark of 6% and with the GDP growth rate right now just at 4.5%, the right question to ask is, is India already in stagflation? which will be a very bad piece of news for the country because stagflation is feared so much just because it's the worst of both the worlds. Which are these worlds? These are the worlds of GDP growth rate and inflation. So before we make a judgment on this topic, let us try to understand what's going on with regards to our inflation situation. Now let's take about three steps back and see when did we start worrying about inflation. So the first jump was from 3.28% to 3.99%. This happened in September. Now this was a cause for concern because 3.99% uh, is just about the comfort figure for the comfortable figure, basically the target for the Reserve Bank of India, which is 4%. So this was just about right. But after that, the, the inflation figure jumped from four, about 4% to 4.62%, which again was a cause of con for, for concern. And because of this, the Reserve Bank of India, through the Monetary Policy Committee, chose to not reduce the interest rate on the December 5th policy review, which in retrospect makes sense because the latest figures on inflation are way beyond what everybody was predicting. It was supposed to go up, but it had jumped from 4.62% to 5.54%. Now, this is bad news because 6% is the upper limit, right? So the Reserve Bank of India's target is 4 plus minus 2%. So if it breaches the 6% figure, then the Reserve Bank of India will have to do a lot of explaining to the government. Right. So now the question right now is what is beyond 5.54%? Is the economy going to breach the 6% inflation mark? Because if that happens, then there will be a lot of panic for sure, especially uh, on, on, on in the monetary policy circles because the Reserve Bank of India's first duty is to maintain price stability. Right. So this this, of course, is a cause for concern, but this alone cannot cause stagflation. So let's understand what is stagflation. By its uh, very constitution, the constitution of the word itself gives you the hint what it stands for. Stagflation is stagnation plus inflation. Right. So now what is stagnation? Stagnation is uh, the slowdown in the economy. If the economy starts slowing down and moves towards a recession, it need, it need not be a recession. A recession, of course, means uh, two successive quarters of a negative GDP growth rate. But even if there is a continuous slowdown in the, in the growth rate of the GDP, then we may say that the economy is stagnating. And inflation is, of course, a rise in the general level of prices of goods and services. So why is this so surprising? I mean, stagflation, though it's very common these days across the world, but till about 1970s, people did not even believe. It, it, many economists would, would not have even heard your argument that something like this actually can happen. And the reason is very logical. When we say stagnation is happening, it simply means that the economy is not growing at a good enough growth rate, which obviously also means that, you know, there is not enough prosperity in the country or whatever is there is actually growing at a slow rate. And under such circumstances, prices are not really expected to go up. So a slowing GDP growth rate is not usually accompanied by an increasing general level of prices. When the two happen together, along with there is one more friend for stagnation and inflation, that is a rising level of unemployment, which is quite logical because when the GDP slows down, the growth rate slows down, then 
unemployment also increases in the economy. So it, that is when we say that stagflation has hit an economy. The word comes from a, a British a parliamentary discussion debate during the 1970s when the Chancellor of the Exchequer happened to use the word and then it caught up with the business media. So before 1970s, this word had no existence at all. It's a recent phenomenon, but it is something which has been observed with a lot of regularity among many countries. The first major event that showed us that stagflation is possible was the oil shock of 1973 when crude oil prices went really up. At that time, the GDPs of most of the countries, especially the developed nations, started crashing while inflation was, for obvious reasons, going up. So that's that's our understanding of stagflation. right? So we have understood here that Stagflation is not a logical phenomenon because policies that slow down economic growth rate actually act in the opposite uh, act, act, act to pull down the inflation rate. So if GDP rate is going down, one could blindly predict that the inflation rate would not be troublesome in the country. But with stagflation, that's not quite logical these days because we have been observing this in many countries even in in Africa this this is observed with great regularity and it's usually associated with policy failure that the government has not been able to properly plan its priorities now let's look at the case of India and let's try to see what numbers do we have to uh, work with and then we will come to a reasonable judgment on whether India is in this stagflation territory so obviously the first number that we have right now staring at our face is the GDP growth rate is 4.5%. This is the slowest in six years. So not really good. Uh, I mean, not a really good figure for, for the country, which was not too long ago, the world's fastest growing major economy. The inflation rate Right now is 5.54%. This is the highest rate in about 40 months. It's still not uncomfortable. Inflation 5.54% is still manageable. The troubling part is that this inflation rate, as we saw earlier, is rising with great you know eagerness. And then the third figure which I have chosen to include, which uh, you might find somewhat surprising, is the that our imports are falling down. And the last month we uh, was the fifth consecutive month of slowing uh, in imports. Imports are falling. Now, uh, under normal circumstances, this would be good news for the country because obviously any country would want to reduce imports, increase exports and there, thereby reduce trade deficit and even move towards surplus. But it is happening when the economy is slowing down a lot. It clearly indicates that the impact of the slowdown is being felt by the supplier by the suppliers of the country. So a lot of essential imports are also not being made in the country. This is one reason, one, one metric which helps us understand that there are problems in the economy which go far deeper than the immediate concerns. So this is uh, one more uh, you know, metric. Then another metric which was released along with the inflation figures is the index of for industrial production the iip figures now this is negative 3.8 percent which means that the industry is contracting by the way the iip is a measure of the volume of the industry of of, sel of select units in the industry so overall our volumes are shrinking this in a way also indicates or forewarns that the gdp growth rate for the current quarter also will not be really high I, I mean for high right now uh, in india would be five percent so it seems like we will struggle to reach even five percent in the current quarter and then we have another figure which is gst collection goods and services tax collection the good news here is that after 
a few months of trying the figure has now breached now, now has crossed 1 lakh the 1 lakh crore figure uh, which the government has been targeting for for months however we have to understand that this quarter also had a long festive period because of which sales would have increased in the country so this spike in the gst collection is sort of understandable and can be seen as an outlier uh, the real concern is that the gst collection in this year most likely will be less than the previous year which will be a huge reversal in the progress made on the gst front so far but this also is understandable because when the economy is not doing well the tax collection obviously will take a hit right so these are the numbers we have to work with now let's come back to the original question which is uh, whether there is a sustained slowdown in the economy and whether the inflation rates are actually going up now we have to here understand what really is an alarming level of inflation for the country the alarming level i in my opinion would be about 8% even though 6% is the you know red line for the reserve bank of india 8% is when the country should be alarmed that's one the second point here is that this is mainly being driven by food inflation so food inflation touched 10% in november and the weightage for food and beverages in the overall constitution of the consumer price index is about 46% so obviously when food inflation goes up so much the overall retail inflation is also impacted and the good news here is that this food inflation problem will probably gets will hopefully get sorted in the next 2 to 3 months because the winter sowing season has begun well and uh, we know the problem with regards to food inflation started because the monsoons withdrew from india much later than they were expected to which damaged a lot of crops towards the fag end of the kharif season and the in the rabi season this doesn't seem to be a problem so that can be sorted out the bigger concern here is what happens to our economic growth rate the gdp growth rate in that regard half of it is true our economic slowdown seems to be driven by structural rather than cyclical factors this this is a deeper issue for uh, this is a much larger issue for introspection but with regards to stagflation we have to understand what is now going wrong why is there so much concern about the economy now if our inflation rates are going up one clear reason for this is that the supply side is not motivated we are not getting a lot of excitement and confidence on the side of the suppliers and this is happening irrespective of the huge corporate tax cut that was uh, you know basically gifted by the government to to india inc in september the corporate tax rates were cut from 30% to 22% for the established co companies and uh, to 15% for for the companies which will be registered in india and yet we are not seeing the supply side response to this incentive so that's a, that's a problem then the second reason why this may be happening is that there is a lot of liquidity in the market the only reason why prices would spike so much is even if, if even if we consider only you know food inflation is be that people have the money overall there is liquidity in the country and this is understandable in a way because you know the reserve bank of india slashed the interest rate five times before it paused in the sixth monetary policy review so overall the interest rate has been reduced by 1.35% although the reserve bank of india governor he he said that the transmission is just about 0.5% which means the banks have not really passed on all the interest rate cuts to the end consumer and this is a clear warning to the monetary policy committee that they need not reduce interest rate any further which again is kind of bad news for the government who would want the interest rate to go further down because the lower the interest rate the higher the gdp growth rate is the usual equation which obviously works if everything else is the same 
and uh, like i said earlier the monsoons they were they are responsible for all this in the stagflation uh, talk uh, there is uh, nothing here to worry in the long run about inflation so uh, six months from now, eight months from now, I don't think inflation will be a problem unless the next monsoons also, you know, play play dice with the country's economy. That is, arrive late, rain less, and then rain a lot at the fag end of the season, which is precisely what happened this year. So we'll have to wait and watch there. And then another problem is, uh, if you can call it that, is the constitution of the basket of the consumer price index, which gives a lot of a sort of a disproportionate weightage to food inflation, which is in a way understandable because eventually it represents the basket of an ordinary Indian, which uh, is, you know, half of which is spent on food items. That's why it has the weightage of about 50% in the overall consumer price index. And lastly, uh, and uh, I should admit somewhat controversially on my behalf, I have to say that you know the government is distracted. This is a this is the time when the government should be you know pulling all the punches to make sure that the economic growth returns to the right direction. But uh, you know uh, right now, just to put it simply, the government actually wants to make sure that all the citizens of India are indeed in India by counting them. So and and see this is important because uh, for for a lot of reasons. Now the the most important signal to the economy comes from the government. So hopefully we will see a lot of action from the government front. And in any case, the union budget is coming in February. And uh, one thing which is almost sure to happen is that the middle class will get a huge income tax bonanza, which again will boost the economic growth rate in the next financial year but may also contribute to inflation because again there will be a lot of money supply in the market right so overall what we are concluding here is there is no stagflation now there is no fear of stagflation even in the short short run uh, the problem uh, with regards to inflation is temporary but the problem with regards to the gdp growth rate is sort of structural which means will take a lot of effort to rectify right so our conclusion is uh, you know it's not stagflation that's what even you know this gentleman would agree with so i'll leave you with that and uh, thank you for the session i'll come up with more such sessions in the coming days and uh, Again, two more things. If you are a serious uh, civil services aspirant, then you should check out gk.napli.com. And if you are preparing for MBA interviews, then we have this mba.napli.com for you. See you in another session. Thank you.